it should become obvious why things like pornography, not just the accessibility of pornography, but the intensity of pornography can negatively shape real world romantic and sexual interactions. This is a serious concern. The discussion is happening now. The underlying neurobiological mechanisms you now understand. And this isn't to pass judgment on whether or not people like or don't like pornography. That's an ethical discussion. It's a moral discussion that has to be decided for each individual by virtue of age, etc. But again, any activity that evokes a lot of dopamine release will make it harder to achieve the same level and certainly the greater level of dopamine through a subsequent interaction. So yes, indeed, many people are addicted to pornography. And yes, indeed, many people who regularly indulge in pornography experience challenges in real world romantic interaction. Fortunately, most people do not experience or pursue enormous increases in dopamine leading to these severe drops in baseline. Many people do, however, and that's what we call addiction. When somebody pursues a drug or an activity that leads to huge increases in dopamine, and now you understand that afterward, the baseline of dopamine drops because of depletion of dopamine, the readily releasable pool, the dopamine is literally not around to be released. And so people feel pretty lousy. And many people make the mistake of then going and pursuing the dopamine evoking, the dopamine releasing activity or substance again, thinking mistakenly that it's going to bring up their baseline. It's going to give them that peak again. Not only does it not give them a peak, their baseline gets lower and lower because they're depleting dopamine more and more and more. And we've seen this over and over again. When people get addicted to something, then they're not achieving much pleasure at all. You even see this with video games. People will play a video game. They love it. It's super exciting to them. And then they'll keep playing and playing and playing. And either one of two things happens, typically both. First of all, I always say addiction is a progressive narrowing of the things that bring you pleasure. So oftentimes what will happen is the person only has excitement and can achieve dopamine release to the same extent doing that behavior and not other behaviors. And so they start losing interest in school. They start losing interest in relationships. They start losing interest in fitness and well-being and depletes their life. And eventually what typically happens is they will stop getting dopamine release from that activity as well. And then they drop into a pretty serious depression. And this can get very severe and people have committed suicide from these sorts of patterns of activity. But what about the more typical scenario? What about the scenario of somebody who is really good at working during the week? They exercise during the week. They drink on the weekends. Well, that person is only consuming alcohol maybe one or two nights a week. But Oftentimes that same person will be spiking their dopamine with food during the middle of the week. Now we all have to eat and it's nice to eat foods that we enjoy. I certainly do that. I love food in fact, but let's say they're eating foods that really evoke a lot of dopamine release in the middle of the week. They're drinking one or two days on the weekend. They are one of these work hard, play hard types. So they're swimming a couple miles in the ocean in the middle of the week as well. Uh, they're going out dancing once on the weekend. Sounds like a pretty, pretty balanced life as I describe it. Well, here's the problem. The problem is that dopamine is not just evoked by one of these activities. Dopamine is evoked by all of these activities. And dopamine is one currency of craving, motivation, and desire and pleasure. There's only one currency. So even though if you look at the activities, You'd say, well, it's just on the weekends or this thing is only a couple times a week. If you looked at dopamine simply as a function, as a chemical function of peaks and baseline, it might make sense why this person after several years of work hard, play hard would say, yeah, you know, I'm feeling kind of burnt out. I'm just not feeling like I have the same energy that I did a few years ago. And of course there are age related reasons why people can experience drops in energy, but oftentimes what's happening is not some sort of depletion in cellular metabolism that's related to aging. What's happening is they're spiking their dopamine through so many different activities throughout the week that their baseline is progressively dropping. And in this case, it can be very subtle. It can be very, very subtle. And that's actually a very sinister 
function of dopamine, we, we could say, which is that it can often drop in imperceptible ways, but then it, once it reaches a threshold of low dopamine, we just feel like, hmm, we can't really get pleasure from anything anymore. What used to work doesn't work anymore. So it starts to look a lot like the more severe addictions or the more acute addictions to things like cocaine and amphetamine, which lead to these big increases, these big spikes in dopamine, and then these very severe drops in the baseline. Now, of course, we all should engage in activities that we enjoy. I certainly do. Everybody should. A huge part of life is pursuing activities and, and things that we enjoy. The key thing is to understand this relationship between the peaks and the baseline and to understand how they influence one another. Because once you do that, you can start to make really good choices in the short run and in the long run to maintain your level of dopamine baseline, maybe even raise that level of dopamine baseline and still get those peaks and still achieve those feelings of elevated motivation, elevated desire and craving. Because again, those peaks and having a, su a sufficiently healthy high level of dopamine baseline are what drove the evolution of our species. And they're really what drive the evolution of anyone's life progression too. So they're a good thing. Dopamine is a good 